Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yep, and we are still not done with the Microsoft Exchange Zero Days. Turns out that the workaround that Microsoft published is not really effective in actually blocking all variations of uh, the exploit. The pattern that Microsoft recommended blocking is autodiscover.json at PowerShell. Well, it turns out the at symbol here is overly specific according to some and it may lead to a bypass if another character, for example, is being used here. I would still recommend applying that uh, workaround. Uh, not sure if there is a more generic one that uh, won't cause any problems. So if you have already deployed it, definitely don't undo it. It does protect against some attacks, just not against all attacks. And as usual, be aware of any exploits that you see out there. Apparently on GitHub, there are a number of fake exploits. I haven't run into one myself yet, but haven't really been looking for these exploits either. There are also apparently some fake exploits for sale. Just like whenever we have a high profile vulnerability like this, you have the usual fake exploits. You have the exploits that are probably just going to rickroll you or in a worst case erase your system if you are running the exploit. So caution as usual. And talking about patches that uh, didn't quite get the job done, uh, well, turns out that Schneider Electric had this problem with a patch they released in 2020. The CVE number for the vulnerability was 2020. 28212 and it was a vulnerability in the Unified Messaging Application Services or UMass, a proprietary protocol that Schneider developed. The basic vulnerability here was that the session IDs were predictable. So an attacker could essentially figure out what session ID is being used. And then the attacker would inherit all the privileges of the currently logged in user. The way Schneider fixed this issue was essentially by making the session ID longer and uh, or more random. Uh, so it wasn't so easy to uh, guess the session ID, but it uh, turns out that a lot of this uh, was done on the client. So essentially uh, these larger session IDs uh, don't quite get the trick done here as far as authentication goes. And that's essentially the vulnerability that Kaspersky now reported on and uh, wrote up. Now, a fix has been available for a while and it's called an application password mechanism, but this is something that you have to specifically enable. And then we got another supply chain attack to talk about. And I think this is actually legitimately uh, to call this a supply chain attack. The victim here is first of all, COM100. COM100, uh, does uh, produce sort of support uh, software, video chat software uh, for enterprises. Apparently they do have a good number of clients, something like 15,000 customers. And the problem here was that the installer that you downloaded from the legitimate COM100 uh, website was backdoored. The installer was signed with a legitimate uh, COM100 digital signature. So apparently uh, COM100's software development process here uh, was compromised. It allowed for the backdoor to be included, which then of course installs uh, malware on any system installing the COM100 software. This uh, signature uh, was created September 26. So that's likely when uh, the compromise happened and it remained available through September 29th. So if you download an installer uh, during uh, those three days, you probably do want to pay attention. And of course, with anything like this, uh, you never really know what they'll discover uh, soon. So if you are a COM100 uh, customer, reach out to them and uh, see what other details are so they need you to pay attention to. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.